when someone comes up and says something like, I am a god, everybody says, who does he think he is? I just told you who I thought I was, a god. I just told you. That's Kanye West says, I am God, and this happens. What happens, you might ask? Well, Kanye condemns himself by proving the biblically recorded words of Christ to be 100% right. By the way, please bear with me. I'm still working on my next regularly scheduled video on God's great plan for your life, but I was compelled to take a short break to address this latest Kanye West issue. This is why I try to caveat my video announcements with Lord Willing. I don't need to spend a lot of time on this one, though, because what Kanye foolishly says is so specifically covered in Scripture. And for those who might think that I'm judging Kanye, let me say one thing to you. You are absolutely right. But am I condemning him? No. Only God can ultimately do that. But since Kanye calls himself God, perhaps he may have already condemned himself. And why do I say that? Well, for example, we look at Job, who God allowed Satan to severely afflict by killing his children, stealing his wealth, and even destroying his health. So in the book of Job, which is, by the way, 42 chapters long, after Job takes the lion's share of the first 37 chapters to defend his innocence in the wake of all of the calamity that befell him, God begins to answer him in chapter 38. But I want to focus on a part of chapter 40. It occurs after God had hurled a slew of questions at Job that he just could not answer, proving how foolish he was compared to an all-wise God. By then, Job realized he'd made a major mistake. This led Job to fearfully, and I emphasize fearfully, say to the Lord in chapter 40, verses 4 and 5, Behold, I am insignificant. What can I respond to you? I place my hand over my mouth. Once I have spoken, and I will not answer. Even twice, and I will add nothing more. God was now on the scene, in a whirlwind. And Job was ashamed and afraid because he now knew that he had misspoken of God, albeit unintentionally. But it was too late. God was just getting started. Look at how God responded to righteous Job in verses 6 through 14. Then Yahweh answered Job out of the whirlwind and said, Now gird up your loins like a man. I will ask you. You make me know. Will you really annul my judgment? Will you condemn me that you may be justified? Or do you have an arm like God, and can you thunder with a voice like his? Adorn yourself with exaltation and loftiness, and clothe yourself with splendor and majesty. Pour out the overflowings of your anger, and look on everyone who is proud and make him low. Look on everyone who is proud, and humble him, and tread down the wicked in their place. Hide them in the dust together. Bind their faces in the hidden place. Then I will also praise you, that your own right hand can save you. With that in mind, let's not forget that Kanye is admittedly arrogant and prideful. Because now, and I told you about my, my arrogance and cockiness already. Now, the greatest artist that God has ever exist, uh, created is now working for him. <laughs> And God's word doesn't stutter when it says that he resists the proud and pride goes before destruction. Yet unlike Kanye, Job was not only righteous, but he was also wise enough and humble enough to not willfully charge God foolishly. Job 1.22. In fact, in chapter 9, verse 20, Job even wisely says of himself, Though I were righteous, my own mouth would condemn me. Though I were blameless, it would prove me perverse. And so although Job did not curse God as Satan and even his own wife wanted him to, he did need to be taught at least one valuable lesson. And what was that? It was that being faithful to God does not shield or protect us from suffering, loss of loved ones, loss of wealth, loss of health, or even from a most tragic and untimely death. 
In other words, in a fallen world, anything that can go wrong for a wicked person can also go wrong for a righteous person. Job and his friends didn't quite believe that, though, perhaps because they were decent men who also were very prosperous. So as far as God was concerned, class was in session. And I would challenge you to go and read the whole book of Job, or at least chapters 38 to 42. It is a wonderful reminder for all of us who are in Christ that in a fallen world, anything can go wrong for even the most faithful Christian. Yet God can and should always be trusted, especially when we can't sense his presence. Now, we prepare to head over to the New Testament to hear from Christ Jesus himself. But before we do, let's watch the clip of Kanye. Then I will come back and show you how West's own words condemn him with crystal biblical clarity. You're kind of like this, you know what I'm saying? And some people try to put you into a yesterday mode. You know, at one point, yay, we hear, and this is all you. We hear, you know, Jesus is king, we hear this, but that's all you. Then there's sometimes you just want to say, man, not it, but you just want to say, man, this is what I'm feeling right now. Are you in that space where you're comfortable enough to say, this is where I am right now. I'm still a man of God. I'm, Jesus still is king, but this is vultures right now. This is where I am. It is, but I, you know, I, I have my issues with Jesus. There's a lot of stuff I went through that I prayed and I didn't see Jesus show up. So I had to put my, uh, my experience in this world, my experience with my children, my experience with other people, my experience with my account, my experience with my brand, and my experience with the level of music that I was dealing with in my own hands. You can actually physically do something yourself too, more than just pray. And we're so in this mentality that that's all that needs to happen, but. We ain't, we ain't praying our way out of prison. Mm -hmm. We ain't praying our way out of the abortion clinics. We ain't praying our way to get our land back that was always ours after gentrification, after the Harlem uh, Renaissance and Black Wall Street was burned mm -hmm. to the ground. Them prayers ain't working. We, gonna, we have to apply actual physical building partnerships. Hands and, it, and it don't start unless we could really be real with each other and say, this is what I did, this is what I did. Like, I mean, look at this, I know I'm not going to third rail your interview, but look at the power of what happened when me and Kyrie was on the same page. See, that's what's scary. But what they do is they put us each in the silo and say, your grandmother going to lose her crib and this kind of, you know how many threats we've been dealt, dealt with? And I didn't pray my way through them threats either. I had to get up and do it myself. I had so much to do. I didn't have time to pray, you know, because I'm God. And anyone disagree, I'm the God of me. And you can't tell me who I am. I can't tell y'all. I could tell y'all. It's y'all job to listen. I'm the God of me. You know, it's another thing I don't like in Christianity, the fear of God. If God is love, why should you fear him? Because you place one fear, you get another fear, you get another fear, we have that point. You're easily controllable. You're easily sellable. You're easily contracted because you have this fear on you. Like, everybody's going to die eventually. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to live my entire life with zero fear. Fear of a contract, fear of perception, fear of getting my black card, denied. Fear. I'm not going to jump in front of a train. Right, right, right. <laughs> Conscious, right. you know, straight from pink pole. I got a chip on my shoulder. I'm a lawyer from Carlito's Way. And I'm, I'm fried at this point. You've heard Kanye's rant. He made it clear that his issue was with all of the difficulties he was facing in life, including all sorts of concerns about his wealth. He essentially blamed Christ for not responding to his prayers. And of course, you heard his conclusion. He said, I am God. Now, keeping in mind all I just shared with you about Job, let us look briefly at what Christ has to say about the situation. For that, we go to Matthew chapter 13, verses 3 through 9, which says, then Jesus spoke many things to them in parables, saying, Behold, a sower went out to sow, and as he sowed, some seed fell by the wayside, and the birds came and devoured them. Some fell on stony places, where they did not have much earth, and they immediately sprang up, because they had no depth of earth. But when the sun was up, they were scorched, and because they had no root, they withered away. And some fell among thorns, and the thorns sprang up and choked them, but others fell on good ground and yielded a crop. Some a hundredfold, some sixty, some thirty. He who has ears to hear, let him hear. The parable of the sower is one of my favorites, as it essentially speaks of four types of earth. Or, as I like to say, if you move the H from the end of earth and place it at the beginning, it forms the word heart. And this parable is indeed like four types of heart that drop the T at the end of heart and you have hear. It is a parable about four types of hearers of the word of the kingdom and their hearts. Now, I hope I didn't confuse you, but it is clear that this is what the parable is about when Jesus explains it in verses 18 to 23, when he says, Therefore hear the parable of the sower. When anyone hears the word of the kingdom and does not understand it, 
Then the wicked one comes and snatches away what was sown in his heart. This is he who received seed by the wayside. But he who received the seed on stony places, this is he who hears the word and immediately receives it with joy. Yet he has no root in himself, but endures only for a while. For when tribulation or persecution arises because of the word, immediately he stumbles. Now he who receives seed among the thorns is he who hears the word and the cares of this world and the deceitfulness of riches choke the word and he becomes unfruitful. But he who received seed on the good ground is he who hears the word and understands it, who indeed bears fruit and produces some a hundredfold, some sixty, some thirty. So in reference to this parable, I ask, could the case be made that Kanye, who was discipled with scripture by Pastor Adam Tyson for countless hours, days, weeks, and months, was like the wayside heart, which hears the word of the kingdom, does not understand it, and that wicked one comes and snatches away what was sown in it? Well, I'd have to say yes. But many, myself included, tried to give Kanye the benefit of the doubt of having made it beyond that phase. A lot of his ideas were misplaced, but there seemed to be at least a moderate amount of passion for Christ and his kingdom present for a time. Again, in reference to the parable, could it be that Kanye, who made a mega hit album called Jesus is King and traveled across the country performing its songs in churches, was like the stony place's heart, which hears the word of the kingdom? immediately receives it with joy, but it does not take root and only endures for a while. But when trouble or persecution comes because of the word, he immediately stumbles. Again, I'd have to say yes. And many, myself included, began to question Kanye's faith as he again started to produce and praise the work of some of the vilest secular artists. He started again to make his own explicit songs and also married another woman just after being divorced from his first wife and mother of his four children, Kim Kardashian. But again, with regard to the parable, could it be that Kanye, who began to talk more and more about money, about who was out to get him, even making what could be construed as anti-Semitic comments, who was banned from a city in Europe for allowing his new wife to publicly perform a sex act on him on a tour boat, and who constantly parades her publicly in the nude, could it be that he's like the thorny heart, which hears the word of the kingdom, and the cares of this world, and the deceitfulness of riches, choke the word, and he becomes unfruitful? Well, anyone who holds to the veracity of Scripture would have to say, yes. Now mind you, these first three types of heart only have one thing in common with the fourth type, and that is a heart that hears the word of the kingdom. You see, the fourth type of heart is the good ground heart, and that is the heart that bears the fruit for which the sower, who represents the Lord, spreads the seed. The first three soils did not bear the kind of fruit the sower wanted. And what kind was that? Well, Jesus gives us a clue in John 15, 8 and 16, which together read, By this my Father is glorified, that you bear much fruit, so you will be my disciples. You did not choose me, but I chose you and appointed you that you should go and bear fruit, and that your fruit should remain, that whatever you ask the Father in my name, he may give you. You see, the fruit the Lord desires is not born in a wayside heart because its seed is snatched away before it can take root. Neither is the fruit the Lord desires born in a stony place's heart because it only endures for a while. And thirdly, the fruit the Lord desires is not born in a thorny heart because before it can become the kind of fruit the Lord desires, it is choked out by the cares of the world and the deceitfulness of riches. So you see, the fruit the Lord desires is only born in the good ground heart because of what happens to the seed or word of the kingdom there. It takes root. It remains. It is not choked out, but it indeed bear fruit in some a hundredfold, in some sixtyfold, and in some thirtyfold. And those three distinctions can be likened to those that John even mentions in 1 John 2, 12 to 14 of fathers, young men, and children. In other words, the oldest in the kingdom the younger in the kingdom, and the youngest in the kingdom, or in the faith. This is so because when God saves a person, they for the most part begin to bear fruit of true righteousness at one of those three levels. God ultimately decides which. For example, Paul and the other disciples of Christ were saved and almost immediately placed by Christ into the positions of fathers of the church. Sure, they were like babes in many ways, every true Christian is, but they were also young men who in a matter of months were made fathers. But I digress. Every true Christian is bearing the kind of fruit the Lord desires, some younger in the faith and some a little older in the faith and some very mature in the faith. But one thing is certain, 
And that is that a person who constantly blames and blasphemes the Lord and who calls himself God is neither of these three. How could he be if he has the spirit of Christ without which one does not belong to Christ? Romans 8, 9. Will Kanye ever prove to belong to Christ? Only God knows. But without the evidence of the fruit of righteousness, God expects us to let God and his word be true, even if every man, woman, boy, or girl be found liars. And to say that Kanye has borne the fruit of true righteousness would be to make the Lord, who gave us his great parable of the sower, sound like a liar. I don't know about you, but I'm not, nor do I ever expect to be prepared to charge Christ, the Son of the living God, so foolishly. Job didn't, and by the grace of God, I won't either, and I hope that you never do. Kanye condemns himself with his own words because his words perfectly contradict Yahweh's. So all we can do is pray for his soul, because if salvation is of the Lord, then how much more will it take a sovereign God to save a man who believes that he himself is God? We need to let Kanye serve as a reminder that we must not allow celebrity, wealth, or fame to move us to partiality. And way too many churches, even some good ones, are very guilty of that. I pray that they cease and desist before God has to intervene. Any and everyone coming to or even already claiming faith in Christ must be held to the same holy standards of Scripture. And if they refuse to comply with Scripture, then they must be disciplined and even excommunicated from the church if necessary. Because what Christ said is still true. A little leaven indeed leavens the whole lump. So, beloved, think biblically. Live righteously. And most importantly, as Romans 6.22 says, be sure that you have the kind of fruit that produces holiness because only that fruit results in everlasting life. God bless.